Hello, welcome back to Indie Gamiacs. Today, this video is going to be slightly different to some of the normal things I've done. Um, this content is not from me. Okay, so this content is I've teamed up with a, a really good writer that I found called CSH Pickney, as you can see here. This is his website. And he does lots of writing for indie developers, indie games. So we've got, I'll just show you, we've got. Um, different services he does he does reviews workshops helps developers with any stories and plots and loads and loads of things he does for um for the gaming community but he doesn't do any video so i asked him uh, again with his permission of course i asked if i could read some of his articles and reviews out um for youtube and then just put like a montage video in the background so all the content you're going to be hearing in this video is all all his content all his words i am just doing the the voiceover and putting the video together um and i just thought you might really enjoy it um so again the great thing is check his work out because it's really really good really good writer um really active in the com community as well so highly recommend you check him out and you're going to really love his articles and you're going to hear one very shortly. So thanks for checking this out. Say thanks to CSH Piccany and enjoy. Okay, so here are 10 things you should know before submitting your game to reviewers. Number 10, make sure it's actually a reviewer you want. This might sound silly, but many indie developers are not native English speakers and even those who are can sometimes get the terminology confused. All too often, excited indie devs send me review copies of their game when after a brief discussion, I find out they were actually seeking alpha or beta testers. There's more to it, but in short, testers play your game and provide feedback on what works and what doesn't to help you improve your game. A reviewer is someone that plays your game, judges it, and then tells the world what they thought about it, good, bad, or otherwise, to influence others to purchase or not purchase your game. If you accidentally send your game to reviewers instead of testers, get ready to have your game slammed all over social media and gaming platforms, and good luck undoing the damage. It's unlikely anyone will give you a second glance after that. I'm one of the nice reviewers that will let you know if your game probably isn't ready for me yet and maybe even provide you with some useful feedback to help you on your way, but that isn't the norm. Number nine, when should you send your game to reviewers? Essentially, when your game is ready or at least very close to. A week prior to release is fairly standard. That gives us a chance to review the game in time for launch day. If the game is in excellent state and you're just eyeing out a couple of bugs, we can live with that because we still know you have a week to fix it. The exception is if your game is one of those rare few that still need to sit in early access for an extended period of time and you need to draw players while it's still in early access. Even then, your game needs to be as polished as possible before seeking reviewers. We will let some things slide for a game in early access such as not all features or locations yet being implemented for bigger games. But if your game is still riddled with bugs or has major balancing or other issues, that's how your game will be judged. Number eight, looking for reviewers. If your game is on Steam, start with its inbuilt curator function. It even has a search function so you can try looking for similar games and genres. Next, try Twitter. Some of Twitter's communities are less than ideal, but the gaming community on Twitter is surprisingly healthy and wholesome. Again, use the search function to look for tags like hashtag indie or hashtag indie game and go from there. Be sure to pay attention to the people who are liking and commenting on posts about your game. If you find someone that has a lot of nice things to say about your game, click their profile, take a look, because it could be a reviewer that's taken a shine to your game. Another way you can use Twitter to attract viewers is by posting that you're looking for reviewers and content creators. You may want to start promoting this around the same time you start promoting your launch date or as part of hashtag picture game events, etc. 
Next, I would recommend approaching other indie developers with similar games and asking who they had some success with. Although they're theoretically your competition, I found the whole indie gaming community to be really supportive, so they'll probably help you as long as you ask them nicely. On that note, if you do find some success with a reviewer, I'd suggest asking them if they can review any others. Many of us reviewers talk to each other, and it's not unusual for us to bump games across each other if we're being sent something that looks promising but it's outside of our scope, like a wrong genre or platform, etc. You can also try your luck with some of the big name mainstream reviewers, but I would make sure you're prepared before you do this. Mainstream reviewers usually seem to follow popular opinion, which means if you approach them with a stack of negative or positive reviews already in the bank, they'll probably give you a review to match. If you approach them without any reviews already banked, then they probably won't give you the time of day, unless you've had a really strong marketing strategy in place that they're already watching you. Number seven, what are you looking for in a reviewer? Are you just looking to rack up your positive review score and don't mind if the numbers are fake? There are loads of joke and bogus curators on Steam that can help with that. To be clear, I don't mean to besmirch any reviewer's good name. If any of these are legitimately reviewing people's games in the sense that they only give positive reviews to games they like, even though the actual curation notes are bogus, but some of them really leave me doubting. Nep 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 and I Am Batman spring to mind. I even saw one that had positive reviews for thousands of games, but all the comments I read stated, have not played this game, here for curation purposes only. I see these curators and reviewers as a blight to our industry, and I won't take part in any of that, but I do understand why an indie dev might utilise some of those. Finding reviewers can be hard, and also algorithms hurt, so I don't hold it against those who use those methods. There are also a number of Steam curators that review games in a similar manner, but in order to serve a niche function. For example, the FPS Police, or X or Not style curators, which do nothing but bookmark games that meet certain criteria, such as specific frame rates, solo or multiplayer mode, controller function, etc. I thought I'd mention the existence of these, since many indie developers create niche games that may benefit from this kind of service. Otherwise, the most effective form of review in terms of actually attracting players is the honest review. Even negative reviews may actually attract players if the things the reviewer didn't like in a game happened to be the things the player was looking for. So don't be scared of them. You can't please everyone. And number six, we have reviewers come in all shapes and sizes. Reviewers are a diverse animal. As mentioned above, some may offer only a positive or negative review with no explanation. Others, a score, others, a short verdict. Likewise, reviewers may have multiple audiences or offer other services. So while I suggest Steam's curator function is a good place to start, don't stop there. For example, these days I primarily operate via the Steam's curation function. However, I also follow up with posts on Twitter and occasionally also publish full reviews or conduct interviews. Don't get too hung up on the size of a reviewer's audience, particularly when it comes to niche or indie games. Some reviewers have large audiences that don't actually engage with their content. Smaller reviewers may offer smaller audiences, but they are usually full of players that are dedicated to their cause. Finally, don't spam every reviewer you find with your game. Like players, reviewers have different interests. If you send your game to reviewers that don't normally play your genre, they may simply reject the game, but you run the risk of them slamming you with unfair negative reviews because they didn't enjoy the game because it's not their sort of thing they normally play. And number five, should I contact a reviewer? Yes, absolutely. It will be very rare for a reviewer to ask for a copy of a game. Not because we aren't interested, but because it's considered rude for us to do so. If you want us to review your game, you have to be the one that makes contact. At number four, should I send a free reviewer copy of my game? Most of the time, I would suggest yes. Do the math. Considering the actual revenue you make after Steam and or your publisher take their cut, how much do you lose by sending a copy? How many extra sales do you need to score from a review to make that back? Even if the reviewer doesn't let you a single additional sale, well, now at least you have an extra review in the bank to help fight the algorithms. 
you can obviously get bigger bang for your buck by sending your game to the right reviewers. A word of warning, there are a few nerder worlds that pretend to be reviewers or beta testers in order to score free copies of games. Some developers like to make reviewers jump through hoops by having them register to review their games to avoid this. I don't think that's necessary, but it won't hurt if you spend five minutes Googling a reviewer to check out if they're legit or not before sending them a copy of your hard-earned work for nothing. Another way to avoid this is to send your game via Steam's curator function. It won't help if you send it to a dodgy reviewer, but at least they can't sell on your key. And number three, how to make contact with reviewers. Start with the media you found them on. If you discovered them on Twitter, contact them there. If their direct messaging is locked, try their website or send an email. If they're a Steam curator, you can also contact them through that function. Please note though, when sending games via the Steam curator function, be aware Steam does not provide any method for reviewers to get in contact with you. You may like it that way. Otherwise, if you want to encourage us to get in contact with or send feedback or bug reports directly to you, rather than publicly, you need to include an email address in your note to the curator. And number two, what do I say? Keep it short and sweet. Introduce yourself, your product, and offer a copy of the game. A single sentence explaining your game is all that's needed. If we want to know more, we'll ask for it. You may also want to link us to some screenshots or a trailer. For example, hi, my name is Richard, developer of Super Awesome, our first commercial game. It's a twin stick space shooter. We're planning on releasing our game a week from now. If you would like to review it, get in touch and we'll send you a copy. Number one is one more thing. If your game is being released on Steam, do yourself a favor and enable the screenshot feature before sending it into the big wide world. You wouldn't believe how often this is missed. And worse, I've often received games where the screenshot key, F12, is still bound to open a dev console or perform some other undesirable function. If you want people to share footage of your game on social media, make it easy for them.